canning this hide over here and it needs more bark. It's most of the way done, but it needs one more good sized batch of bark to finish it off. And uh, a lot of people ask me how I reduce the bark. Uh, this is a, a really common question, so I thought I'd do this short video and talk about that one, chopping bark. So I've used um, like a chipper shredder, one of the big industrial ones, and also like a small garden size one. Those work great if uh, they're heavy duty enough to shred the bark that you have. If you try to throw this big chunks of bark like this in a light duty one, it's, it's going to mess it up. So either chop it up smaller or get a more heavy duty grinder. I don't have access to one of those. I've never owned one. I actually have one here I'm going to fix up eventually, but it needs um, either an engine or some way to hook it up to a tractor or something. So most of my bark has been chopped by hand with a hatchet. In a lot of ways, I like the fact that I do that. Um, it's not always convenient. It's not convenient right now. I'd much rather just go grab a bunch of bark that I have, you know, like a giant container of bark already shredded. But um, in other ways, I like the fact that I do it. It, uh, it forces me to slow down. It's a good time to uh, kind of relax and just think about things um, or just daydream. And, uh, you know, it's simple. All I need is this, something to sharpen this with, and a block of wood, and I'm ready to go. So there's nothing to maintain, nothing to break, nothing to fix. It is time consuming, especially if you're doing large skins, but you can do it. You know, I do larger skins like uh, cattle skins and, and all that with, uh, you know, chopping it just like this. I recently read an account from the late 1700s of this guy who was talking about a tannery in Ireland or England, and he remarked that they still chopped all their bark by hand. Most tanneries were grinding it with big stone wheels at that time. You know, it can be done on a large scale because this was a, a commercial tanner. I don't know how big it was, but, um, you know, they were tanning skins to sell and they were still chopping the stuff by hand. It's totally doable, it works fine, and it also makes you really good with a hatchet. I'm trying to chop this really thin so it takes some, you know, it takes some control. I'm not just randomly whacking at it. The grain of the tree runs up and down like this and that's what the, that's how the nutrient flows up and down the tree. So we want to interrupt that so that the tannins and whatever else is in the bark, the sugars, can come out through these uh, porous ends. So you'll see that I'm chopping at kind of by diagonal to make sure that I'm chopping across those fibers. If I were to just chop it straight like this, <clears throat> these fibers are still intact and nutrients can't flow out. So for the most part, I'm always chopping across that. And I'm trying to chop one quarter inch thick and smaller. The smaller the bark is reduced, you know, if I just throw a chunk like this and boil it, I'm not going to get everything out of the out of the uh, bark. So to get as much of the tannin as possible, uh, we want to reduce this to pretty fine. And the thinner you cut it, the more likely you're going to get everything out. Also, the thinner you cut it, the more it breaks up as, as you're cutting it into little bits. Um, so I just really try to cut everything under a quarter of an inch. So other materials that you might encounter um, are more or less the same, like if you can grind them up smaller, you're going to get more out of them. So I'll leave that up to you. If it's something really fine or lightweight and not, not too uh, difficult, you could maybe toss it in your blender like leaves, for instance. You could throw it in a blender or just crush it up really well. Oh, what kind of hatchet to use? So if uh, you might notice this hatchet looks a little funny. This is a one-sided hatchet. It's sharpened on one side. This is known as a hewing hatchet or a broad hatchet. It's made for shaping wood. It's pretty much made for shaping wood long ways for making flat surfaces on a piece of wood. So it's pretty ideal for this, but you don't need that. Any sharp hatchet is fine. More important than the shape of the hatchet is how heavy it is and whether that suits you or not. I wouldn't personally want to use one any heavier than this. Um, one-handed for a long time. As it is, this this one's fairly heavy and it's a little stressful. Like I've been looking for a smaller one of these for, for years. I mean, the more you use it, the stronger you're going to get. But if it's making you really fatigued in your arm here and uh, in a way that's actually bad, then uh, yeah, get something a little bit lighter. I 
I guess another thing I'd say about chopping bark this way and a similar task that might seem skillless and menial is that they aren't. Um, if you find this totally menial and not requiring any skill, you're not trying hard enough or paying enough attention because it actually requires um, it actually requires intense concentration to get these consistently small chips. And at this point, not cutting off my finger. When I get down to something like this, it's too small. I just smash it up. So this is about what you end up with. You know, there's some big pieces always, and then down in the bottom here, there's some fine stuff, almost like sawdust. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll sift this and throw a quarter inch screen, and I'll save the uh, fine, the finest stuff for layering, which is where you tan hides by putting in layers of bark uh, between the skins and stack them up and let them soak. And then I'll cook this coarser stuff on the top into a tanning solution, more like a tea which is what I'm doing today. But today I'm just gonna throw all this in because I don't have time to uh, chop enough to save the fine stuff. I'm just gonna fill a pot and cook it. If you uh, take the bark that you've chopped up and walk on it with heavy boots for five minutes, that's gonna reduce it quite a bit more and you'll get more fine powder. You're gonna get more out of it. You'll get more material for layering if you wanna do layering. And the other thing is uh, take breaks, you know, give your body a break. It's pretty awesome. Your body's like an awesome machine that fixes itself, but only if you give it time to repair and don't, you know, continually beat it up. This is pretty stressful on your wrist uh, just to do that motion over and over and over again, especially if you're not used to it. So ideally you could, you know, set this up, set up a tarp, get your pile of bark and don't think of like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to make this pile of bark right now. Just do it until you start to lose appetite for the work, you know, until you really kind of want to quit. And then go do something else for a little while, and when your appetite for that work returns, just come back or wander by and chop a little bit more bark, and it'll add up faster than you might think. And just a closing philosophic point here. The more you invest directly into the materials that you're working with, like, say, chopping this bark by hand instead of using machine, you know, I have to pick up each piece of bark. I peeled each piece of bark off a tree. I have to pick it up and chop it with a hatchet. Um, let's say the other extreme would be you could buy a prepared skin like a rawhide and get bark extract, which you can buy. And then you throw the whole thing together and you're like, yeah, look, you know, I made leather. Yeah, that's you did. And that's cool. It's it's cooler than buying it. But the more you invest directly at every stage, the deeper that whole process goes. You learn a lot more, but you have this kind of like uh, more connected feeling with the things that you're working with and more deeper understanding and the final product is going to mean a lot more to you. That's what I'm all about. That's what this channel is about. And if you stick around, I'm going to show you how to, you know, make your own lime for treating the hides and kind of everything as much as possible from the ground up. Because to me, that's what it's all about.